Hello, everybody. Thank you for gathering here. It's a great pleasure to me to be at the Data Native stage. And I have the great opportunity to talk about the topic which I'm actually working on all the time. Yeah? So shortly to me, my name is uh, Patrick Koeg. I'm Chief Operating Officer at Green Finance. What does this fancy job title mean? It means that I'm responsible for IT, risk, which includes our data science, and established countries. But in reality, my love for data and what you can really see what data brings comes when I was uh, Chief Risk Officer at Green Finance. Huh? Today, what I'm going to talk about is how we implemented a smart data approach uh, in our company, and I'm going to benchmark it uh, to big data to get some clear definitions. But don't forget, I'm talking about the consumer lending space. Yeah? Good. Works. Um, the content of my presentation will be uh, separated in three different parts. First, I'm going to talk about Cream Finance, data, and me. So what, uh, what did we do in Cream Finance to achieve better results with data? Then I'm going to give a broad overview how data is utilized in the consumer lending space and what are the views and the perspectives on the usage of data. Then I'm going to compare smart data versus big data from different views, first consumer, then data scientists, and then data sources. And in the end, uh, I'm going to make a wrap up. So everything's going to be awesome in the wrap up. Yeah? So don't worry. Good. First of all, Green Finance was established 2012. So we are a very old startup in reality. Yeah? So uh, what do we do? We provide to consumers loans online. And where do we do it? Um, we do it firstly in Poland, which is our biggest market and our headquarter. In Austria, we have our whole IT sitting. And then we have lending operations in Latvia, where I'm currently based, Czech Republic, Denmark, and Georgia. And we recently opened Mexico, because the market research says it's like a great country to go, and we really love tequila. Yeah? Good. Um, currently, I think with 234 employees, I checked it last week. We have a lot of open positions in IT and risk, if you want to look. We are doing uh, 35 million uh, euros revenue run rate, and we are profitable. That means we are actually not depending on outside financing, uh, financing so we are not really desperate. Huh? Up to now, uh, we raised 50 million euros in private, but already also in public markets. And this year, we got the Inc. Award for the fastest growing fintech in Europe and the second fastest growing startup. So it seems like we're doing something right. Huh? Good. Let's go to the real topic. Why did we actually start to love data at Green Finance? So basically, I joined Green Finance in mid-2013 as group business controller. Formerly, I was at KPMG Consulting Credit Risk. I was at uh, Coca-Cola Marketing Controller. And before that, I was uh, consulting Deutsche Telekom uh, over a company in Croatia and Bosnia on business intelligence. So my real origin is basically business intelligence. Then uh, I started in this 40-people company and they said, OK, guys, we want to do risk management. So what are we going to do? So we had three, uh, three countries, and we had everywhere different platforms. Yeah? So it's like a little bit hard to apply anything if you have three different systems to work with. So we said, OK, we start with the methodology, so our target variables are to match. Yeah? We start with unifying the IT, and we start to unify how the process should approximately look like. Yeah? This took us quite a long, lot of tears, lot of work. But in Q3 2014, we were ready. If you now look at the slide, yeah? in Q3 2014, we started with our first three data scientists to work on our underwriting. Underwriting means to predict yeah, if a customer will pay back or not. Yeah? So that's your target variable. And what we did until now, from the industry average of 10%, we reduced it to 4%, only based on data. Yeah? And especially our, let's say, the smart data approach, which we differentiate afterwards. Yeah? Good. Let's talk about the landing space. Already mentioned, target variables are basically two. Uh, it's called underwriting, yeah, if you provide a loan or not. And the target variable is basically 
does the customer pay back or not? And the second target uh, variable is normally, is he fraudulent or not? So you have to check his identity, and you have to check if he pays back. Yeah? There are very different views on data, and normally I start to categorize the space in two different things, non-digitally transformed and digitally transformed. What means non-digitally transformed? Non-digitally transformed, these are companies which are very traditional, so they have quite a legacy. They are very long in the business. That means during their time where they were already successfully operating, data just came up as a topic. Therefore, for them, this is pretty new. If you look at non-digitally transformed lenders, this is like one part of them. They look at data like the German Emperor Wilhelm II on horses. As I can quote him 1900, uh, I do believe in the horse, the car is only a temporary appearance. Yeah? So uh, I would say in Berlin style, they are vintage lenders. Yeah? They don't change anything in the last 30 years. Yeah? Then you have non-digitally transformed big data lenders. So they figured out after a lot of conferences and a lot of buzz, yeah, there is something happening, we should actually do something. So what they are doing, if you have, let's say, a 5,000 people company, to implement something very easy with low costs, you buy something, outsourced. Quite simple, yeah? So basically, they're going to start to buy a score. Maybe it works, maybe not, OK? Then they start to buy a second score. But the real issue is that this approach has a limitation itself, because if you work with different scores, unfortunately, it is the case that the raw data normally slightly overlaps between the different scores. So if you're not capable of working with raw data, you have a natural limit of how much outside scores you actually can buy. Yeah? Good. Let's move on to the focus of today, digitally transformed lenders. These, guy, these guys have the core competence that they can work with raw data, and they are normally quite young. You can further split them down in big data-oriented lenders and in smart data lenders. So what are big data-oriented lenders? They focus on outside sources, so mostly MySpace, if it still exists, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and other information from social media. The basic idea is that with this information, you can score anybody worldwide, which is a super nice idea, but you know what's also a nice idea? Communism. But it doesn't work because the implementation sucks. So basically, the issue is, first of all, um, that um, Countries differ too much. We are operating in different countries. We can see that not even Google is used everywhere. Did you ever hear, hear from uh, Cessna or from Yandex? You can't imagine. There are even different uh, uh, Facebooks everywhere. So it's actually very hard to say that there's a global source of information. Secondly of all, um, the dependency. You create a huge dependency on not specialized data providers. What does it mean? I mean, you maybe all remember that Facebook changed its app in Q2 2015, yeah? so that you couldn't uh, get any information of the friend's friend's profile anymore. So if you had a model which uses this data, it was useless pretty much instantly after this change. And third, which is actually for me the most important part, it's a huge burden for the client. But we're going to get to more details afterwards. I just have to check the time. OK, it's OK. Um, <laughs> What does smart data, uh, smart data lenders do differently? Smart data lenders, first of all, use every local database on raw data format, so we are using all credit bureaus. But what we really are doing is we are leveraging all data in our processes. That means we have, um, we have for every SMS, email, what we write, a delivery report. We monitor everything which happens on our homepage, how the customer uh, fills up his registration form, how his mouse, uh, mouse moves on the homepage and also uh, what is his device. Yeah? The idea is uh, we leverage data which we anyway have and we should measure because a good company measures its processes yeah? and try to get information from there. The huge benefit is it is in our control. So we control how to get the data. OK, let's make a deep dive. First of all, the registration. Let's assume you are a consumer and you need money. So what you do, you go on Google, Sesnam, Yandex, or something, or Bing, sorry, for forgot Bing, um, and try to find an online loan provider. For my example, I will say now there are only two. There's a big data provider, and there's a smart data provider. Let's do the registration form. 
At the big data provider, you will start with a very simple step. That means you will give your name, personal ID, address, email, telephone. So far, nothing back. In the second step, it already gets a little bit, let's say, fuzzy, yeah? You have to give your car type, property, mother's maiden name, yeah? Feels a little bit uncomfortable already, yeah? In the third step, which I actually personally like the most, you just have to give access to your Facebook. That means all your private messages, your private profile, your posts, where, we are, uh, where have you been. It's cool, so they know about your private life, huh? You can have a chat with them, maybe, huh? But you know, that's not enough. In the fourth step, you're gonna take, uh, they're also gonna ask for the LinkedIn, because your private life is not your whole life. You also need the professional life, you know? Better safe than sorry, you know? And in the end, just to make it very, very nice, you just make a small selfie with your ID, and then you're finished, huh? Okay, the guys know you're now better than your grandmother. But I mean, who doesn't like to share data? Uh, with the smart data approach, you really try to be not too invasive to the client. That means you're really asking the basic information, yeah? And then you just, uh, he just has to verify himself, yeah? Why I actually can say this is because we actually did samples, you know? We're not sitting around all the time thinking smart data is the best, so we really try stuff, you know? It's like in our roots, huh? So what we tried, we actually launched the Facebook Connect in the good old times when the API really provided all the data, which was great, huh? uh, in one country. And what happened was very interesting, yeah? First of all, we figured out that 30% of our clients don't actually have Facebook, and there is no other local Facebook, yeah? And second of all, our conversion rate, including these clients, dropped by 40%, 50%. What does it mean if your conversion rate drop? you have double marketing expenditure. So it was a very short sample, I have to say. Yeah? We afterwards analyzed the data that was not valuable for us. Yeah? Good. That's the customer view. Let's make it easier for you to understand the example. Let's image, imagine you're a great data scientist. I'm not there. Yeah? Good. You have, on the one side, big data. You get huge amounts of data, which is very inconsistent, as mentioned before. Not everybody has Facebook, LinkedIn, huh? And then the first thing you will do is you will start cleaning all this mess. After you cleaned all the mess, you will have to segment the clients and create different models for different segments. At smart data, as you control all the data, what are you getting, because it's your own process of data gathering, you have a very consistent, uh, consistent uh, data, and you will have less. That means you will segment less. Why it is so important for me to point out the segmentation is, as you most probably know better than me, yeah, you need for every model a certain uh, bad, uh, bad clients, yeah, loans which got late. Yeah? That means the more you segment your clients, the more, uh, the more bad loans you need to create valid, good models. Yeah? Second point, um, if you operate with the big data principle, you will try to squeeze as much data as possible into a model. What does it create? It creates mildly built, uh, extremely complex model. Yeah? This model you still have to interpret, monitor, um, check for overfitting, and use proper model techniques. If you work with smart data, you're going to create, you only look on the most valuable information, that means your model will be much more transparent and easier to interpret and monitor, which creates less work. But as smart data lender, you don't have to be, uh, let's say, stupid. In order to increase discrimination, for example, in, uh, at the client space, you can use another target variable with the same data. As your models are easy and your data cleaning process, you can just use a different target variable. For example, loyalty of client. This is, for example, what we use. So we don't only score fraud, Credit, uh, credit risk, but we also score loyalty to further discriminate the clients. Good. Last but not least, I still think that I'm quite good in time. Data sources. So let's think about um, more strategically, yeah? what is with all these data sources? Yeah? First of all, if you work really with big data, yeah? you're reliant on a lot of uh, not specialized data vendors. What does it mean? Basically, Facebook actually is, let's say, not very interested to share the data with you. Yeah? That means if they, if they see any uplift in their platform yeah, to change the privacy settings, they're going to do it, and then you don't have the data anymore. In smart data, first of all, you use your own data, which makes sense. 
And secondly, you're going to use credit bureaus. Credit bureaus business model is to give you data. So that they're going to change something, it's very unlikely, besides increasing the price. Yeah? Good. <laughs> Let's think about data security. Think back about the registration slide I have. Yeah? In the registration slide, I said the one lender knows you like your grandmother, the other not. Let's imagine both lenders get hacked. Okay? At which uh, lender the hack has a more worse, uh, a worse impact for the client? Obviously not us. Huh? Last but not least, because I'm a very cost-efficient person, because I don't like costs, is the big data hype recently, in the last three, four years, there were a lot of vendors, I can, uh, a lot of vendors, huh? really on LinkedIn all the time, yeah? who are trying to sell you some scores, some platforms, some data. Yeah? And many people really, really, because of the hype, decided to buy it. There was no cost efficiency thinking about this. Huh? And if you compare, if instead of trying to buy everything from outside, to start to monitor actually your processes, which you anyway should, because you, sh you should have a performance measurement yeah, in your company, yeah, then it's a much more cost-efficient approach to do smart data, yeah, and also much more sustainable, as pointed off. OK, guys. Actually, we managed it. We're coming to the wrap-up. Three most important points. Think about your client first. Make it simple for the client. The client will reward you. Yeah? Nobody wants to fill out 20 minutes registration, give away everything. First of all, uh, second, sorry, uh, <laughs> be cost efficient. Yeah? First, think what is your target, and then start by doing what is necessary. For example, changing the whole company to one platform. Then do what is possible. Then you will do the impossible. We are also now experimenting on a totally different level than two years ago. But we do it by ourselves, so internally. Yeah? And third of all, think about the control and the ownership of the data. Yeah? It would be very sad if you build up a startup yeah? and you rely on outside sources, and then they change the data privacy settings, and your startup is worth nothing anymore. OK, guys, I think that's it for me. Um, I'm going to be, for any questions, at the boot yeah? till 3 o'clock. Thank you.